So we'll take our tenant here. We're going to add a production domain into it, which is down on this screen. So normally uh, you just go to the admin center, go down to settings, click on domains. You'll find this one here. And this one is um, a domain which we just purchased just for the use of these demonstrations with the with the uh, migration work that we're doing. So planium.com. I'm going to add it in here just by clicking add domain. So what you do is we can type in planium.com into the box here, use this domain. Now it can pick up that it's registered with GoDaddy. And you can see here it's saying if you want to sign in with GoDaddy, uh, you can, and it will do it completely automatically for you. Not everybody has GoDaddy or different registries. So rather than just sort of click through and do next, 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 finish and be done, I just want to go to more options and I'll show you how to do it with the text records inside the uh, domains DNS. Um, and then we can add the other uh, records that we need in there manually as well. So as I say, rather than just doing the, the automated way, um, which is still a valid way of doing it, but, but this way we can uh, just uh, add a bit more context to what we're doing. So we'll click on this, add a text record and continue. Now what it's going to ask us to do is add this record here, the MS record as a text value inside the DNS. So we'll just copy that one and I'll go to my domain manager for GoDaddy and we'll just say manage DNS. And you'll see that because it's a brand new domain, it's currently parked and there's really not much going on here. Uh, what I will do is just go in and add a record. We say add. And we'll choose a text record. We just put the symbol for the root and paste that in there. And we just hit add record. Now, the nice thing with DNS nowadays is that it, it says here it's going to take 48 hours, but there's no way it's going to take 48 hours. In fact, it probably would be done right now. Um, and we can just check that out and we can say verify. And that should, as you can see, it's done very, very quickly now. What I want to show you next is then we just hit continue. And now, obviously, we've got the domain in there, but we need to add some items in here for exchange and the like. We need to add the MX record for the mail, the text record for the SPF, the uh, sender policy framework, and also the auto discover for the C name. So let's go ahead and put those in. We'll say add DNS records. And as expected, you can see here it's asking us to. Uh, to log into GoDaddy. Now I'm going to cancel that and say, no, we don't want to do that. We are going to uh, go and do that manually ourselves instead. So to do that, we just need to run back in here. And rather than just saying continue and let Microsoft add the DNS records ourselves, we just hit more options and we say add your own DNS records. We can continue there. And that'll tell us what we want to add in. So it wants the MX record, the C name, and the text record. So what we'll do is we'll take the MX record first. So easy just to copy this guy, go back to DNS management and just check if there's an MX record already. There isn't, so we don't need to change anything, but go to MX and we'll put in the, oh, excuse me, right, wrong, uh, wrong key there, shift that. Priority, this is the, obviously the mail priority. Normally they, they put zero. I like to put 10. I'm a bit old school with that. It's just the uh, the lowest value is obviously what uh, what it triggers. Let's go ahead and put the item in there. We have a default TTL. Um, we just put an hour. I think the default is the hour anyway. So add that record. And that'll be all good. Let's just jump back and do the C name. So you want C name, auto discover, outlook.com. So we'll just copy that to make it easier. And we'll jump in and add a C name, which will be auto discover. Is that one in there too? Add that record. And the last one is the text record. So we'll copy that one too. Yes. And add in the text record, which will be there, a value. But what I will do is while I'm here, I will take out this guy. We don't need this one anymore. We can go. There we are. They are in. Now, when we uh, go back to here and say continue, it's going to check for them. Now, if it comes back and says that they're not ready yet, it's because it just hasn't had enough time to populate. But in that case, let me show you how you can actually check 
just using a quick um, command line to see if they are actually propagated out on the net correctly. So we'll just use a command prompt to do that. And we use a little tool, NS lookup, which uh, does a DNS lookup, obviously what it says there. And if we put in, uh, obviously it's gonna look at the A record first of all, that's the default and the default server name is the 192.168.0.1, which is probably going to be your local router. Uh, obviously, if you're in a business, it could be the, the local gateway. So if we put in here, we put set Q equals MX, we want to query the MX record. We want to query that for planium.com. See what it comes back as. So it looks like it has done the change. It is, sorry, it has made it to the uh, our local router, which means it's fully propagated out, which is very nice to see. But if it wasn't, if it comes back and says it's not there, what you can do is you can change it and say server 8.8.8.8, which happens to be the Google DNS, as you can see there, dns.google, and just up a couple of times and do the same check, and you'll see whether or not it's made it onto the Google server. I normally use that as a benchmark because that's that's one of the quickest ones um, to, to update, so if it's, see if it's there. And we can obviously set the, the type to text as well, do the same thing and we'll see what text records exist and you can see the only one there is the SPF record the other uh, MS trigger that we had in there is gone and we can lastly set it to C name and we can do auto discover this is not just going to be planium.com because that one has a prefix on it and see if that goes to outlook.com which it does so really we are now in a good spot we can exit that and that one and we can say continue and it should find those records without any problem at all, which it has. Domain setup complete, so we are done. So if we hit down there, we can see here it's become the default because it's. Uh, uh, we don't normally use the on Microsoft.com as a default unless it's the only one there, obviously. But it means it is now a live domain. And if we set up users and give them mailboxes and things, they the email addresses will be live, um, obviously straight away. So that's as I say pretty easy to do. Um, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and I will talk to you later.